hi, how are you doing today? I'm great. <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you. Thank, um, I'm here with Alex Siever. He is um, the artist Mako, and he just had a brand new single come out a couple weeks ago called Again, um, which is amazing. If you guys haven't heard it yet, you have to go listen to it right now or after this interview. Um, but yeah, we're here just to hang out and chat a little bit to see, um, you know, how the writing process went, hear a little bit more about the single and kind of get to know a little bit more about him. So um, yeah, if you could tell me a little about yourself, who is Alex as a person outside <laughs> of music? Like what makes you you? Um, I'm uh, contrary to uh, how I put myself out there on social media. I'm like incredibly silly. I don't really uh, take much serious in my life except for work and music so that's why I'm always so serious when I'm at work related <laughs> stuff but uh, yeah I'm just like a goofball dude from uh, Southern California and uh, have sort of a bizarre journey through music over the last decade and a half um, that led me somehow to make music like again. That's awesome that's awesome well okay yeah I want to hear about that bizarre journey like what what is the last you said decade and a half what has it been like the last 15 years? Yeah. Um, like, how do you get to where you are now, I guess? That's probably more. What age were you in middle school? Like, when was I in middle school? Yeah, like, what age are we in middle school? Uh, it's started... uh, Like, between 13, 14. 13, 14. Okay, yeah. so yeah. So yeah, that, that counts as 15 years. Okay, cool. So um, I started as a French horn player, believe it or not. Um, that is awesome. Yeah, I was uh, like super hardcore and I have no idea why. I just really uh, gravitated towards that instrument. Um, and I ended up going to Juilliard in New York City. So I was going to be a wow. professional French horn player, which is not what you'd expect like from a That's like Juilliard. Pop. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it was crazy. It was really cool. But uh, it was very like my whole scope was just classical music. I never listened to anything else growing up. Um, I just listened to Mahler symphonies and just nerded out, talked to no girls, <laughs> and, you know, <laughs> had my own weird ass upbringing. And then uh, music's amazing though. So there's no yeah, I love it. I mean, listen, like if there's anything I want to like pimp out more, it's just like orchestra stuff. Like people, yeah. it, it's so good and people don't even know about it. Um, and so, yeah, you know, I had like a kind of crazy uh, college experience where my senior year, my teacher was like, you're not going to make it as a French horn player. So I was kind of like, oh. all right. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it was brutal. Oh, but it's, you know, and it's also like coming out of prison a little bit where it's like, I don't have any other skills to enter the workforce. I'm just this like ex French horn player. Um, and so I ran off to Los Angeles where I am now to pursue okay. a career in like movie music. I really loved uh, you know, listening to John Williams and, you know, watching yes. fantasy stuff like Lord of the Rings growing up. So I was like, well, if it's not going to work for French horn, let's, uh, let's head out to LA. And then, yeah. you know, that's like chapter one. And then chapter two is like stumbling through electronic music and EDM for a couple of years and then right. moving into pop music and indie rock. And then now circling back into film scoring. This is such a long story already, but like my kind of like weird, bizarre journey has actually created an environment where I kind of have like a bunch of unique influences that are, you know, pretty bizarre and cool to mix together. So that's what I'm doing with my record is basically just like mixing all my influences together in a pot. Well, that sounds like an awesome record. So we're gonna talk about that in a minute <laughs> too, but wow, that is really, that's incredible. Uh, what drew you? so? Coming from classical music, what drew you to EDM? Yeah, it was uh, my a, a guy I met at the time named Logan. Uh, yeah. I just moved to L.A. and I met him two weeks in. Our dads were college roommates. And he's like, uh, do you want to go to Electric Daisy Carnival with me? And I had no idea what any of that was. Like, I, when I say I only listen to classical music, like I, I didn't know anything else. Uh, and so I was like, that sounds ridiculous. And he's like, it's in Vegas. And I was like, I'll go to Vegas. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And that's like, I don't know what that's like, but it's like if you like introduce somebody to religion by taking them to Mecca for the first time, it's just like <laughs> so overboard to like become yeah. acquainted with something you didn't know existed at EDC. It's insane. Yeah. Um, and foolishly, I like listened to the music and I, I loved what it was doing. Like it was beautiful and it was huge and expansive. And for the first time in my life, I saw like young people at a concert, like classical music is just old people, you know, like you don't <laughs> see kids like just like losing it to music. Yeah. So that was like such a beautiful like scene to walk into. And then I heard the music and I foolishly thought like, oh, this doesn't sound so hard to make. Like I could probably do this. Um, and then like eight years in, I realized like, oh, Jesus, this is so <laughs> what did I do? <laughs> 
I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, and I just thought like, Hey, like let's, let's mess around here. I did something, whenever I talk to like kids that are studying music, I'm always like, if you're ever intrigued by anything, just like go wander through it for a little bit. Yeah. Like I'd certainly never thought like, I want to be a DJ all of a sudden, but it was like, Hey, this is an interesting thing I just had. I really like this experience. Let me just mess around here. And yeah. then I just developed a, a passion for it. And uh, I kind of knew it was my stepping stone from ancient music into modern music. <laughs> weirdly enough so I use that as a nice bridge to get me more acquainted with pop and all kinds of things that uh, I just didn't know anything about at the time wow well that is that is definitely a journey an interesting journey. Bet, <laughs> yeah wow that's I can only imagine like going for, I feel like please correct me if I'm wrong but I feel like classical and like electronic are like almost on opposite ends of the spectrum a great way to put it yeah accurate <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's the oldest music and the newest music. Yeah. Like, there's there's but no like, bigger chasm. Right, but you being, like, well-versed in classical music, like, you must know, like, your stuff, too. And so, like, having that musical background, like, I feel like that probably had to help as well, too, didn't it? Like, with your... Yeah, that's, a su- it- that's a super good point. And I think that's what, what I meant when I said, like, I felt like it sounded easy to make, which is that I would listen to an electronic track and I'd be able to analyze it like you can break down music into you know harmony and rhythm and melody and all these things that I had studied you know symphonies so I thought hey this is I'll just map this onto this this sounds easy by comparison to a symphony but what you don't realize is what you alluded to which is the newness of it is designing sounds making sense mixing them production like these are things I knew nothing about and so Uh, We had this really funny first couple of years. So I started Mako with that guy, Logan, who introduced me to electronic music. So he was my partner for several years. And we had this funny, like, result of having all this kind of, like, musically dense and interesting material that just sounded like kindergarten production. Like, it was just... (laughs) It sounded so shitty, but the musical ideas were good because like I knew how to write music, but I didn't know how to produce music. So it's like a funny thing to look back over the last couple of years um, of productions and just be like, you know, you can hear a guy just trying to figure it out who knows what he wants to say, but just can't quite say it right. Right. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, that's really, really interesting. Um, Okay, so my next question, uh, who or what really influenced your decision to pursue music? Um, that's a great question. Um, I think like it, I, for most people that speak about like having a real intense passion about something that is particularly like psychotic to get into, like like working in music is not a very like bright idea because it's so yeah. difficult and competitive and crazy. Yeah. But I think for most people, it's like, well, there's literally nothing else. Like I'm I have zero yeah. talents outside of music. Like I'm just an idiot and I this can't figure anything else out. <laughs> Yeah. So it was like, this is, all, this is all I got. So might as well just throw everything at it. But, you know, I was like such a fan of uh, like movies like Lord of the Rings growing up. Like I would, I would listen to the score and then I'd take my French horn into the garage with the headphones and like try and transcribe and listen for the French horn parts in the score. And then I'd just play along with it. Like that was the stuff. That's that little space where you just like felt so alive and so inspired. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it, I think movie music was like a big part of what kind of pushed me forward into uh, anything at all. But it, it, it was never really a thought. It was just kind of somebody handed me a French horn and I was like, this is it. Like, there's no there's never going to be anything else. It's right. only music now. And I don't know if that's the same for most people, but it definitely was for me. Well, that's really awesome, though, that like that's where you started. And like and didn't you I think I watched um, an interview of you recently where you said like in one of your singles, you were able to put French horns in one of the that's awesome. That is kind yeah, of like, it, cool. only recently. It's funny because I was so like PTSD out after college that I just kind of locked it away in a case for maybe like six years and I didn't even touch it. Oh. And so I, eventually I was like, all right, we can get we can like play this instrument again. It's going to be okay. <laughs> And it's right here in my studio. And so whenever I can, I'll just pepper it into tracks. That like that's such a unique instrument too. I feel like to just like I mean, I feel like that just already sets you apart right there, but that you do have that classical background that you know how to manipulate and like just listen by ear and like do bring in your own instrument, your own flair on top of like electronic tracks. I love like when people bring in like outside things that like don't like you said, don't normally go together that are no. Off the spectrum, classical and electric, and bring it together. And I feel like people who do that well and can do that well are like the most talented people out there because it's not 
easy to mesh genres sometimes I feel like but yeah no that's, very well. I feel exactly the same way about it and it's a really good point it, it's not easy be, and a lot of times it's not easy because there's not a model to yeah. work off of I mean so many of us, yeah like so many of us that produce we usually you know have heavy references to things like we know when if I want to make a pop record there's just like you know decades of pop music to reference right. but when you're like I want to put a <laughs> French horn yeah, if I want to put a French horn over, you know, an EDM track or whatever it is, there's not there's nothing out there to compare it to. So you have to like almost figure out how those things live together in yeah. a production sense and in a compositional sense. And uh, there's no model. So with this record, it was a lot of me basically starting with an exercise of like, can I do X and combine it with Y? And then it would take me twice as long to finish those tracks as I is it normally would take me just because there was so much about like figuring out why things don't work and what things do work. And, you know, for the 10 songs that I have on this album, there's probably like another 10 of failed experiments basically where it was like, you know, you can't breed these two animals. Like it just doesn't work, but these over here, we've got, you know, now all of a sudden we've got, I don't know, some, some crazy shit basically. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, okay. So tell me about your, your latest single again. Um, I used, I know you said you have an album coming out soon or yeah like yeah it's it's keeps getting pushed around uh so but we're, we're in december vibes so we're gonna do one more single uh sometime late november and then yeah. album comes out december sweet awesome okay well tell me about again what we're and i guess a little if you want to talk about the album you don't have to but um like your the inspiration behind the song and like your writing process i know you kind of alluded to it saying that you've like a whole big experiment of trying to combine a lot of different things and uh, yeah. to talk about again and what what that process was like for you and the inspiration behind the song and absolutely so the exercise with again and i'll rewind a little bit like i the i had released two or three previous singles on the record uh one is called coyote and one is called parable mm -hmm. and those are these like big neurotic dense cinematic sorts of pieces yeah. of music and i knew by the time i finished those like i need to i need to do something a little bit uh not conventional but i need to do something that's like a little bit easier on the listener like sometimes if you're like i'm gonna throw all this crazy shit at you like that's exhausting so i wanted to make something that was like a, just the format of it was a little bit easier and like obviously i have this past in EDM and dance music. So I wanted to do something very four on the floor groovy, but the experiment okay. with this one was like, can I basically take a big orchestral sound, this like big somber roiling sound, and then just like send that through the yeah. pipeline of an EDM record. So like we use this thing a lot in electronic music called side chaining, where basically like you could take a sound and you have it react to another sound. And in almost every electronic track, you're gonna have it react to the kick. So anytime a kick happens, Happens. everything yeah. sort of sucks down and then comes back up and it creates this pulse and it creates this ability for you to hear the kick and it's become sort of like a like a stylistic effect as much as like a mix effect and so I was like can I take an orchestra recording and like sidechain that to a kick like can I make the orchestra? can I just basically take this thing and manipulate it yeah. the way you would manipulate a synth or something like that and uh, I and I I love organic and electronic combinations of sounds like I love you know real pianos real strings yeah. real things like that when they combine with synths and with modern drums and stuff yeah. like that and so uh like with all of the tracks, I thought this won't this won't be too hard to figure out. And then we <laughs> like, you know, many therapist visits later. Oh right. <laughs> we, we learned some things and we did some damage, but we got this thing done. Um, and so that was the, the inspiration behind starting the track. And then um, the lyrics for this song, I, I, they're not always like sorry, one to like, one. I'm so sorry. Yeah, like the, the track doesn't always like influence the lyrics, but uh, the lyrically, I was I was having this situation happening that I think a lot of people can relate to, which is that there was somebody close to me that was like struggling really hard with depression, and it was a really difficult experience to try and like help. Like some people, they just will not allow people in. Like they think they're burdening you if they talk about what's going wrong, and uh, it was. And this person, I loved death, and 
and it was just like so hard to like try and fit in and be like, Hey man, how can I be there for you? Like how, this is, I know you're hurting so badly and I can't figure out, and I'm trying like everything to figure out how you can let me in. But he's such a selfless person that he's like, you know, I wouldn't burden you with my shit. And it's like, no, please. Like I need you to. And so this song is basically like kind of, I was, I was in that place when I wrote it. So it's, you know, kind of surrounding those sort of ideas. Wow. That's really, that's really, really cool. Um, I, I, Going back to what was the word again that you said to that's like that suctions it that direct yeah, that's called side chaining side chain yeah. yeah I um did you have like tr- you said you had like trumpet like an orchestra I I know like in the choruses I can hear the, remember like the swelling and, and stuff like that and I yeah. I didn't know that was like an actual like technique called that so that's that's really cool I and I thought it sounded awesome. Uh, Thanks. Yeah. 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 There's a whole bunch of just, I, there's a lot of things and and most of it, it's so manipulated that you might not even be able to hear, like yeah. there's a little bit of French horn in there, there's strings in there. There's so, yes. so it's just kind of like, are my favorite yeah. in any song. <laughs> Me, too. Me too. I, cause I love, I love cinematic music also. And uh, I, unfortunately I can't play any instruments, but I sing, but I'm, I'm like, I love anytime a song has uh, just, even if it's like, the fast beat, so like a fast song or like any type strings, I feel like just make every song better. That's just yeah. my opinion. Yeah. <laughs> I love the, choir. the orchestra, uh, orchestral things and combining yeah. it with like, yes, like the modern music and the EDM and stuff. I, I just love that sound. But um, that's really, do you have a music video possibly coming out for this song or any of your other singles that you've had or? Yeah, so we're going really to do awesome this. story and inspiration for that song too. And I feel like that could just really like, really get visually like seeing that story come to life. I feel like that could really just grab the whole people. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I totally agree. I have, I have a tough time with videos to be honest with you. Like it's really hard to, uh, to like find collaborate because I, I can't make a movie I don't know how to do yeah. that any of that stuff yeah. um, and it's like hard to find people that can help realize your vision some artists are so freaking good at like finding the right director and working on yeah. the treatment and getting it all right and uh, I've always struggled with it but we're, we'll do something a little more performance related like we'll do uh, uh, we're going to film a video next week for it like performing you know like yeah. an acoustic version of the song and stuff like that so I, I love peppering things like that in because also with some with with all music, I think, but with a lot of mine, it's nice to sort of reimagine any of these records in different yeah. modes. Too. So I like to do like several mixes of tracks and stuff. But okay, um, is that what you did with yeah. Chameleon? What's that? I, Chameleon? Yeah. Is that what exactly. You did? Yes. So I listened to all of those, and at first I was like, "Wait a minute, does he? Are these all the same? And they're all different arrangements, and I like all of them." I'm Thanks. like, <laughs> I, I, yeah, I love that. I love the reimagined versions and. Um, so, yeah, and that's something that electronic music does so often that other music doesn't, the other genres don't do as often, which is like remixing is the most yeah. common thing imaginable. And uh, I love it. And uh, with the Chameleon Package, you know, um, those are all other people that made those remixes. And so like Ooh. hearing other people interpret your music is so fucking fun because yeah. uh, I don't have to go through the struggle of making it myself, which is always a pain, but like hearing <laughs> somebody else interpret it. Yeah. Uh, really neat i i really like hearing remixes of my own music i don't i think most people probably feel the same but i always think it's the coolest yeah that's really awesome um i'm well i'm excited to hear, so you said there's going to be an acoustic like reimagined version of again yeah. yes that's awesome i can't wait to hear that one um so okay well tell me a little bit can you tell me a little bit more about the album or is it kind of like under wraps yeah. like yeah absolutely i can so it's it, tracks it, on it yeah, so it's finished, thankfully, which took okay. you know, <laughs> four years. <laughs> um, I haven't slept much in four years, so I, I'm trying. My first step is to try and like have some sort of vacation during COVID, which is difficult. Um, but yeah, so the album started. Uh, the album's called Fable, by the way, and uh, it started. Um, the idea for it started a few years ago when I took this like bizarre solitary journey to Norway. I like rented this like this little farmhouse like far on the west coast uh, like just by myself I spent like a week and change there just like alone writing music um and it was like a really moving and and, like interesting and profound sort of like experience to just be like alone alone in the middle of another country making music and stuff and um the idea sort of came to me to tell like stories you know uh, from my life I'm not a very I'm generally a pretty private person so I'm not like super literal about or or like public about things but I I like the idea of telling you know events and like big stories from my life but just using kind of like 
uh, these metaphors to tell them. And uh, I was reading fables at the time, like, you know, just any of these stories that are like modeled after a greater uh, moral, but they're usually told through the perspective of like an animal or some sort of character that's like a representation of the meaning of the story. Yes. Um, and I don't know, everything just sort of clicked like, okay, let me then tell sort of an album full of these fables. So like, you know, as many songs as naturally came this way, they're named after animals and that animal represents, you know, whatever, something that I wanted to tell some story that I wanted to tell. Um, and so it was really fun for me because I've never, you know, I, I've made one album before, but I am relatively new to like this, the experience of making albums. I listened to symphonies growing up, so it's not really like uh, the most present thought for me of like what albums are. And it was cool to kind of like interact with an album that had like a, a fuller narrative to it rather than just pinging out 10 tracks. Yeah. I love like concept album. I love. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I really like whenever artists, um, I don't know, I guess I'm more of a fan of concept. I mean, I'm, yeah, I like tracks you can just jam out to singularly too, but I, I really love albums where I can just sit down and it's like an experience to the whole thing. Like it's just one, obviously every track is different, but like it's relating to, I was probably why I'm such a fan of Taylor Swift. Sorry if that's like a, a swear word. No, not at all. Yeah. <laughs> but I love her storytelling yep. in her, in her songs, like and how she, even after shoot however many years she's been in the industry she still has new things to say and then like yeah. so i yeah i love um love concept albums and and storytelling like in different ways like it's not just repeating one word over and over again like there's like you're going on a journey with each song it feels like yeah um, and there's layers to it like the ta the yeah, recent yeah. taylor the recent Taylor album is a great example where there's like one surface level, which is like, let me listen to this music, which is lovely and it's organic yeah. and it's yes. smaller than usual. And then let me get behind the deep story. Like, what is she alluding to here? Like, who right. are the names of these characters? Who's she yes. talking about? Like, I've, I've had the chance to have a lot of conversations with people about that album too. And, and it's great. Like, it's provocative. Like, you can experience the album in several ways. And for somebody like me and I think most of us who are like in this era of just everyone is releasing so much damn music all the time <laughs> it's like how can I stand out and for some people it's like well I'll stand out by joining the stream and releasing every single week and that's not that's not realistic for me because I don't work that quickly so it's like yeah. okay how can I create wow. music with hopefully like enough depth to it that people will live with it like yeah. like my favorite albums I'm still listening to and I'm sure I'm going to be listening to forever yeah. Like, and it's probably the same for people with their favorite movies where there's just, th there's things to get out of it every single time. Yeah. And the experience can get richer on the 50th listen through because like you're starting to hear things and notice layers and pick out little things. And now you've sat with the lyrics and you know the story and you've, you've seen the whole narrative play out. And uh, yes. I'm like you where I just, I really fell in love over the last two years with just like listening to full albums. And I think it, it makes sense in retrospect because like I used to listen to symphonies as a kid, which are, you know, yeah. typically like 45 minute to hour and a half long pieces. And so listening to something of that length is such a special experience. Obviously listening to a banger of a single is amazing. Like we can all agree <laughs> on that. But when you listen to an album and there's a special important moment tucked mm -hmm. 45 minutes into that album, yeah. Fast forwarding to it doesn't hit the same as spending right. time through the first 45 minutes. Build up. It's too yeah, like earning that experience and yeah. seeing you get there. And, you know, it's not every artist's duty to create those experiences. Right. It's only if you like that kind of stuff. Yeah. And um, I really liked making this album because it was my first time, like, getting acquainted with something like that. And uh, I'm hooked. Like, I, I think I'm, I finally found a place where I know I want to live for a while. Yeah. Um which it takes a long time for any artist, I think, but like, you know, I feel like my history has been bumping around genres a lot. And with this record, I finally feel like, okay, this is where I want to kind of make a little home for myself for a while. Yeah. Well, it sounds like also like you're not just, I mean, I know a lot of people, because I work for music labels. So like, I know um, a lot of our artists, they're, you know, they're new uh, bands and things like that. And some of them um, in the past have, or pe friends that I've had in different bands are like, oh, I want to be the next this, or I want to be this, or like, I like this, I'm trying to model stuff after that. And it's awesome to have influences, I think. Uh, but I think it's the best, like you're the most authentic artist when you can, like what you're doing, 
pulling together and making something new, I feel like. And it's, it's hard to do that. Like, because there is, like you said, so much music being released all the freaking time and so many artists and which is amazing. I love that there is so much variety out there and things like mm. that. And it's hard to find uh, someone that's creating something new and original. And so I feel I like think you're right. Uh, you're yeah. totally right, by the way, but it's hard to do that. It's hard it to is like, so hard to do that. <laughs> Because, and it's hard for a couple of reasons too. Like I, I honestly think you have to live and copy for quite a long time exactly. before you even yes. have anything to say. Like if yes. you had asked me to go make whatever I wanted and jump off a bridge five years ago, I would have not, I would have collapsed because I, I didn't have anything to say at that point, you know? Right. Exactly. The more you grow and the more, you, as long as you're pushing yourself and trying to not staying in a bubble, unless you're like, no, like this is my sound right off the bat. Like I know this, like, I Some people are like that, and I don't know yeah. how they're like that. Like, I find that amazing. Like, Billie Eilish, I like, will. Yeah, like, how do they just <laughs> arrive with such a clear and unique yeah. voice? I mean, those people are superstars, and, like, I yeah. love that. But I also love artists that, like, don't really find themselves until they're older because yeah. it's, like, they've been, you know. They try working. things. They try trial and error, and they're like, oh, I like this, but it's not really, like, you know, yeah. that's not our sound. That's not where we feel like we're going to live, like. Now that we know ourselves better, we have written yeah. a few and things like that. Yeah. And I feel like the other aspect that makes it challenging is that when you do take that leap of faith, because it's new, uh, and especially these days where it's like you live and die by the playlists you get on, like yeah. you just you don't have you don't have a place to go. Like there's not a place. And I feel this way about this music coming out, which is like, you know, no one is really helping us support this because it doesn't really fit anywhere. And um, yeah. You know, that's a great uh, thing because it's unique, market. but it's a tough thing because it doesn't fit into anything that's already been built. And uh, so it's like also challenging to like find a foothold when you're wandering out on your own. So you just got to have blind faith that like, OK, I believe in these ideas. Yeah. And I I think over time enough people will believe in them, too, that like we can at least like have a small community and keep making right. this kind of music. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And like. So I, I'm really excited to hear this album, um, especially now you said it's like, it's a whole experience and like fables and stories. And like, this is definitely going to be an album I have to sit, I'm going to have to sit down with and just like, listen. <laughs> yeah. Do you have it by the way? I got to send no. it to you. No, I don't have it. I would love, I will not leak it. I promise. I would just no, love to listen to it. <laughs> no, I'll make sure to send that over right after this. Well, thanks. Thank you. Yeah. I'll, I'll let you know what I think of it. I, uh, yeah, super excited. I would, Love to, love to listen to that. Um, so, okay, sorry, kind of got off on tangent there, but so, yeah, so your new album, you said thinking December-ish, possibly yeah. keeps getting pushed Yeah, around. I mean, like, literally today it got pushed around again, so that, like, <laughs> it, I, I, I haven't said, announced the date yet, just because it's like, yeah. I'm gonna wait till, like, everybody's like, it's locked for this date, so I don't yeah. bump people up. I got, I gotcha, I gotcha, yeah. I, all right, so end of the year, possibly beginning of the year, hopefully not, yeah. not too late. The people have to wait to listen to that. So I know. Uh, yeah, that's that's amazing. I love hearing about that process and thank you for diving into that. Uh, so now here is a fun question. What is a random fact that maybe not very many people know about you? You can't say French horns already discussed about that. So I know, yeah, I burned that card. <laughs> you can't do that. I've got a good one though. I'm not gonna lie to you right now. I'm ready um, for it. My great grandmother invented the tortilla chip. <laughs> what? What do you mean? <laughs> Anybody can look this up. She's on Wikipedia. Her name's I'm Rebecca Carranza. <laughs> <laughs> um, she moved here from Mexico. Um, with her husband, made a, a like a, a cool little local taco shop in the greater Los Angeles area. Okay. Um, they, you know sold traditional sorts of tacos, burritos, all that stuff. And then she had all these tortillas at the end of the day that yeah. didn't get used. And so she's like, let me just bake these and just see what happens. And it started to become this like local hit. Like people would go because you'd get these things that she invented. <laughs> and then it became like a big, a big scene, I think. And uh, of course they didn't like patent the idea or anything. So like a Frito-Lay came along and just like took the idea. And then that's the end of the ball game. But she oh. got like this thing called the Golden Tortilla Award, and she has like a write up in the LA Times and everything. What's your grandmother's name? Your great grandmother. Rebecca Carranza, C A R R A N Z A. Okay. 
I'm gonna look her up because that is an incredible story. And it's so it's, random, right? That's like what a good conversation starter. Like if you're at like a party or something, like people trying to break the ice. Like, hey, uh, by the way, my my grandma's in the tortilla chip. Yeah, I was on like the the dating apps and shit. Like, uh, you know, like a couple months ago, and yeah. it's the perfect like little blurb to put there because people are like, "What are you talking about, homie?" Yeah, I might have to put this in the title of the video. <laughs> okay, like, <laughs> Speaking with the great grandson, wait, did you say grandmother or great grandmother? Uh, great grandmother. Yeah. Speaking with yeah. the great grandson. Tortilla chip <laughs> royalty. <laughs> Alex <laughs> <and her makeup. laughs> Tortilla chip royalty. I'm writing that down for the title. <laughs> That's amazing. That's. Is that taco shop still like in existence now? I don't think so. I did meet her once. I mean, and I remember this. I was super young. I mean, she lived She lived a long time. She was in her like mid 90s when she passed away. But I, and I think I was like three or something. Okay. Um, and I remember she was funny. Like she was really funny. Um, but yeah. <laughs> that is so amazing. Wow. So that is like, I'm like mind blown right now. Like that's just. Wow, incredible. I bet hers were also the best, you know, versions before they became commercialized and, and things yeah. like that. Yeah, we're gonna have to say like this. She was the original and everybody else is just OG. a remix, you know? Yeah, everyone stole it from stole it from her. So OG, yeah. OG <laughs> Rebecca Car- Carranza, is that how you pronounce it? Yeah. Yeah. I can't, I can't flip my R's. I've taken five years of Spanish and I still can't do the double R. Yeah, and your husband is is Mexican, he said. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's awful. Like it, I have t- I've tried my hardest for years. I have never. So yeah, it's like really embarrassing whenever there, a word comes up that I'm trying to like say, and I just have to skip past and be like, I'm, I can't, I'm sorry. <laughs> just I'm hang sorry. out the car for a second. Panic. I have, I do have one more question for you. And I, and I'm, I think it's a really, I think it's a really good question. Um, yeah. I, I love hearing what people, um, especially people have been in the industry for a little bit and have had their experiences and learned some things and grown up. Uh, if you could go back and talk to your younger self before music industry and to your younger Alex Sieber, what advice would you give him? That's a good question. Um, I would say like, follow your gut. Mm. Like, I don't, I don't know if I, I have any regrets about the way I did anything, but like the thing that I've learned the most over the years is like, you will get pushed around by what the industry expects you to do, what your peers expect you to do, what pop culture expects you to do. And you can get really mixed up in your head about like what you ought to be doing. But the weirdest thing is you fucking know when you're inspired, like, you know, when you're actually like just intrigued by something and you can't get enough of it. And we do so much mental gymnastics to like ignore that because we think like, no, I need to make pop records because this publishing company's interested and that's what they want. And it's crazy how like clear this is. And the second you start like realizing it as like this third eye, uh, it's so easy to follow. And it doesn't always make sense like financially or career wise. Like, why would I go, you know, why would I stop DJing? Like it's so profitable or whatever. And nobody's paying attention to this new thing that I'm doing, but it's like, man, I'm so inspired right now. Like I'm excited to wake up every day and go do this. It, the rest of it will figure itself out. And I don't know if that's just me being naive, but I truly believe it. And it has never like failed me. I mean, things don't always like line up the way you expect them to, but as long as you're like following what you're inspired by, I am convinced that you're the best version of yourself and at the end of the day like that's 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 all you should be aiming for is just to like enjoy your experience with music or with whatever you're doing um and so that's what i would just like say a little alex down and be like it's okay if you got to put this french horn down so I'm like, <laughs> it'll come back i promise but <laughs> oh, wow boom i mean seriously yeah i i could not agree with you more on that probably a lot of that i would tell my younger self too uh mm. definitely it's so interesting like hindsight truly is like 2020 i feel like um but yeah like you said i wouldn't change anything like in my i mean just life experience in general but i would there's a few things i would like to go to like a certain age and be like just chill like yeah you're gonna be fine like it's gonna yeah and don't get and exactly like you know yourself the best and and that's what makes me sad on some artists um that i've talked with like they're like, oh, you know, I just got to make the music that the fans want. Like, this is about the thing that they want. And this is like, this is what sells. And I'm like, okay, but 
that's exhausting to try to like try to fit yourself in a box that's not you for like long term like maybe you could probably like fake it for a few albums but it's like isn't it easier just to be yourself and like not have to be like okay am i on my persona right time right now or am i like act my act my um i don't know like this character almost that they create to like yeah. that's the artist and it's like that yeah, would be exhausting to me <laughs> i agree with you. i mean i also think it's like certain kinds of people can do that they can yeah. weather that because sure. and maybe it's because the pressure to to be liked or to be loved is so overwhelming that they'll they'll push their own happiness on pause. But I also think like there are clearly signs of people that just like will only do what inspires them. And in the face of great success, they'll turn away from it. And then there's so many people that will flock straight towards it and sacrifice everything just to be successful. Yeah. Um, and I, I don't know if that's just, if we're all just like in different versions, like listening to ourselves or not, or if some people are just built for it. But the weird thing about, listening to this like you can tell authenticity from a mile away and like you can hear a really talented person trying to please people yeah and it's the yeah. weirdest phenomenon because like chops are amazing their voice is amazing their writing's so good but if they're not like believing in it like just kind of tell it's a little it's got yeah. the shade of phoniness and like as a person that makes me hear that, I don't think like this guy is phoning it in. I think like, oh, I hope this guy can figure it out and like get to where yeah. I can tell he's not enjoying this music and I want him to get back to where he was before. And like part of the process I think too is like, I, I don't know. I think you're probably always checking in with yourself and none of us, I mean, I certainly don't know what it's like to have like a international hit song like that's got to be such a weird experience that's yeah. got to be like yeah. being a celebrity walking into a grocery store and then all of a sudden like your 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 12 months of fame is over and then it's gone and you got it and now like would like to be like oh should i want to get back to that or not like the pressure on humans must be so overwhelming so i sympathize with people when i hear them lost but you know it's just like you want to hear your artist yeah, like that's why that recent Taylor Swift album was so great because it's like, yeah. okay, this is somebody that's trying to get back to what inspires her music. And it's like, it's cool. To, it's I find that so compelling. Yes, I completely agree with you. I, and I love, and I love watching artists on that journey. Like they, maybe they start out like, I, I feel like, yes, exactly. Like there's a, a authenticity where they're trying to figure out who they are. Like, well, maybe this is where I, the box I fit or, Maybe I'll just do this for a while because I know this is what people like, but I'm still trying to work on it. But I love when like some of our, our artists on our label, like when they get to the album, the record, they're like this, this is us. This is our complete and total authentic self in this album. And um, their heart and their hearts are just, and you can just tell like yeah. you, you, and just even in the performances um, when I help shoot their music videos and things like that, like just watching them even even when we're doing a performance shot like over and over and over and over and over again, you just like the passion never leaves our eyes. And it's like, this is what, that's when you just know, like this is, this is the real, yeah. And, and it's so rewarding to get to be a part of that in like little ways and just to be witness to that of, of the journey of that. I, Cause I, I can only imagine just. It's infectious, right? Like yeah. when you see people just like living their best life. Oh, this is so fun to be around. <laughs> Like, yeah. I love being on the sidelines, like, supporting. Like, I feel like all the people on, on our label are, like, my little babies. And, like, <laughs> I just That's love like, being the support however I can and helping yeah. people get to that spot where creatively, whether that's bringing a vision to life um, through their music videos or, like, helping talk out some ideas or, like, um, you know, giving some feedback on songs or helping create just graph I mean, just anything, anything to help with the process and when they're really happy or whenever they're like, man, that really helps. Like that just, that just feels good. Like I love, help. I love helping our people out. And I love meeting new artists and hearing their stories because every single artist um, being in the industry the last few years, like every single artist story is different and there's no, and it's like people on the outside. I feel like some people on the outside, like don't understand that it's not just this formula ABC and then you get to hear, like, it's like this crazy road of like all these roads that, I don't know it's that eventually lead to that but it's like you got to put that hard work in the hustle and sometimes it might take 10 15 years before something's gonna break but absolutely but enjoy Make the it. journey like enjoy the journey yeah. on the way because that that is you know if you if you don't enjoy what you're doing like what's the point like don't think that you know making it big is gonna be the ultimate happiness like 
try to enjoy it while you're, while you're getting there too is, is what I would tell some artists that are you know newer and it's just so awesome like you said just to be witness to the artists when they get into that realization like this is where this is who I am this is where I need to be so yeah that to me I call it like the flow state or whatever and I'm a huge a fan and it's the most obvious in comedians because like music can be subpar and people can still enjoy it comedy subpar it's just it's not good and so right. when you see an artist like a comedian hit their state they're just funny and they're reckless and they're taking risks and they're just it's exciting and it's authentic I find that maps on so beautifully to any music or artist career in general because it's like you can hear what's up it's almost like you have to like fail enough to be like it's not that bad to fail yeah. again so exactly. like let me just forget whatever it was that was holding me back because I was afraid of failure and like go for it and uh you know we want to see that in people so yeah and it takes it takes time like you said yeah Time and hard work and like you yeah, like you said, not letting the failure scare you because that just means like, okay, well that way is not the best way. We figured that out. Great, let's move on to the next thing. Yeah. Edison didn't invent the light bulb in one day. Like he failed however many times. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's like that concept I feel like is so important. Like people just need to paste that on their wall sometimes. They're like, ah, oh, this record didn't hit or this single didn't catch on like I thought. It's like, okay, it's fine. Like we realized what you know yeah it's a hard thing sorry i can ramble about this for but like it's no don't apologize <laughs> as somebody who's trying to like get better like any yeah. are you, you you need feedback mechanisms yes. to be like oh that didn't hit and then like you and your toy are like why didn't that work but the confusing right. thing about like the commercial response yet is like if something didn't sell most artists I find are like guiding themselves and go, okay, I wasn't doing something right musically. But as we all know, and as you know, working in the record label, it's yeah. like, that's not an indication that the music wasn't successful. It right. can be, exactly. but so can like four other factors. Yeah. And so it's really hard to like, you know, look at the forensics of a crime scene. And I know why this body got killed. Like right. we don't always know, right. but you know, for, 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 you know, most artists are, relatively self-conscious people like you're trying to oh. like quietly figure out like what can matter but you know sometimes it's about like no i believe in this in exactly. the face of overwhelming failure care because i need this to get out there like i have to create this yeah. and like that it's a scary ass thing like i can't ever fault anybody for doing something safer because i get how scary it can be but it, you know it's special when somebody's taking those risks and when yes. they're and when they're figuring it out yeah I, I completely agree with that. Totally. And I feel like that I, I feel that a lot too. And, um, and like my, what I do with, with music videos and things like that, it's so terrifying. Every new video that comes out, like, I hope they like it or I hope the artist likes it. And it's like, I feel like finally this year, even, um, I've like finally hit to the point where like, okay, I'm more confident in my work now than what I was like, even just last year where I'm like, amazing. And I, and I still have so much to learn still. Like, I'm not ever going to be like, oh, I'm, I've made it. Like, I, there's yeah, no, I'll never stop. You know, exactly. And, but I'm like to the point now where I'm like, okay, if this video, I worked my hardest on it and I did the best I could and I accurately like communicated the vision and directed it well and, and edited it together well, like it's a good video. If, if not everybody in the world likes it, that's fine. I know I tried my, my hardest. The artist is happy with it. Then I can't let it, whatever else get to me and I feel like that being able to grow and like also not being letting like the haters who don't even know you it's like a difference between constructor criticism and people who just want to be rude and like don't let those get to you and I feel like that yeah that's really that's hard people yeah. become successful it's like listening to the close people around you like okay maybe try this next time being open to that but like if you know that you're happy with your product and that you worked hard on it and this is you and your voice like run with it even if not I think that's a good point I think it's a great point, which is like there's a time to like open up yourself to criticism yeah. and in a in a protected way. Like I feel yeah. like yeah. for those of us that are music, we have those people around us that we know will give us honest feedback and we trust their feedback and yeah. we have their feedback. And then when you've made a decision about something, you need to close that and just like barrel like a yeah. bull. Yeah. Um, because otherwise you'll just get broken <laughs> by like yeah. the internet. In people are so <laughs> Oh, uh, trust me, I, I know. I bet. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm not even on like a major platform. And I'm just like, 
for so many. Yeah, it's bad too when you like see somebody else getting like carpet bombed and you're like, I feel awful for them. Or I don't deserve this. Because I'm an empathetic person and I just want to hug everyone. Like, <laughs> right. negative. I'm like, oh, don't listen to them. Like, yeah, people don't see right. people online as human beings. It's weird. I don't understand that. <laughs> and people don't yeah and i understand there's are there's hurting people out there too and like that's how they but yeah it's, it's you just want to like what what happened how can i help you like get past these negative feelings yeah i know can't help everybody but yeah sorry <laughs> that's totally took <laughs> no, you're good i love talking about this stuff yeah no me too me too you're um yeah you've been awesome to talk with and uh Learned a lot about you and about your music. And I am so excited for this new album to come out and for the new single that's coming out too. I actually did listen to it and it is fantastic. Oh, awesome. Thank you. I did hear that one. They did send that over to me and I can't wait for people to hear that one. That's also. great. Yeah. And I'm going to, I'm going to shoot you the record. I have a link yeah. to it. <laughs> yes. I would love to. Okay. Uh, well, thank you again. Yeah. For, for hanging out and, uh, Thanks yeah, for thank you so everybody. much for Sorry, having me. A closer. I'm going to have to cut that and like. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. I'm so sorry. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks so much for having me. I hope you survive the streets out there. Thank <laughs> We'll see what happens. We'll see if we're all still here in a week. Yeah. That's true. Well, thanks.